Thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Get a two-year plan with a huge discount plus one additional month for free. Protect yourself online today with NordVPN. What's good? Brian Tong here and welcome to the Apple Bits for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. And Apple has officially announced that WWDC 21's keynote will be another all-digital event held on Tuesday, June the 7th, and it will take place at 10 a.m. Pacific time. That's 1 p.m. Eastern time for my East Coasters. Now, they sent out another invitation for me to break down, and you know that's exactly what I'm going to do. Detective Tong is on the case, and this is not for the faint of heart. Now, Apple always hides nuggets inside of their invites, and sometimes they don't, but, you know, we still like to make wild theories about them. So, obviously, WWDC has historically been a software-heavy event, if not almost always all software. But the rumor mills, they are saying that we could actually see hardware show up this year. So what's the biggest piece of hardware that you see in the invite? Okay, now look closely. Are you having a hard time figuring it out, Dumbo? It's the back of the screens for the MacBooks, and these could either be Airs or Pros, but rumors are starting to lean towards a new MacBook Pro. Now, Apple leaker John Prosser outright says MacBook Pros are coming at WWDC, it might have been the best week ever for Apple fans recently. Look, they just released the new M1 iMac, the new M1 iPad Pro. We got the new Apple TV 4K. We got an Apple TV Siri remote. And you can check out all my reviews right here on my channel. But then Bloomberg's Mark Gurman dropped major details about the potential new processors in the new MacBook Pro, MacBook Air, and Mac Pro. And then John Prosser dropped other purported renders of the Apple Watch Series 7. You know how much I love the Apple Watch. And then Apple put out an announcement for Apple lossless audio coming to Apple Music that left many of us confused with the timing of it since many of its own products won't support it. And then Apple's also in court with Epic. This all happened in the span of five days. But let's get back to German and what he said about the MacBook Pro that we could see at WWDC. According to his report, Apple's planning to launch the long-rumored new 14-inch and 16-inch MacBook Pro models with an improved version of the M1 chip as early as this summer. And it just so happens, WWDC is... In summer! That sounds so sweet. Now, the next iteration of the M1 chip, which we'll call the M1X for now, that's the unofficial name, it will reportedly include a 10-core CPU with eight high-performance cores and two energy-efficient cores, plus the option for either a 16-core or 32-core GPU. Now, that would be... A massive improvement from the current M1 chips, which have four high performance cores, four efficiency cores, and eight core GPUs. Am I the only one that just wet himself? Uh, twice? Now, German also reports the next gen Apple chip will also support up to 64 gigs of RAM compared to the M1's current 16 gig maximum, and it supports additional Thunderbolt ports for more expandability. Now, if we called the M1 a beast, this next chip is an absolute monster. Add this to German's early reports that claimed we'll see a new redesigned body that's slightly flatter and more like the iPad Pro with that iPhone design language. You got the flat edges, the flat body. There will be more ports including HDMI, an SD card slot, a MagSafe charging port, and the potential removal of the touch bar. Plus, we've also heard rumor reports that Apple will also be removing the word MacBook Pro from the front bottom of the screen. You know, they already got rid of the front-facing Apple logo on the iMac chin, and could this be Apple's new design trend where they're just flexing and saying, our design is so iconic, we don't even need to tell you what it is anymore. Now that 16-inch MacBook Pro sounds like my dream machine for 2021 right there. I'm still holding, and I use it the first world term, holding on, with my 16-inch Intel-based fully loaded 2019 MacBook Pro. So my body is ready for WWDC 21. And yes... We don't officially know if this is the machine that we'll see at WWDC, but that's a whole lot of MacBook Pros or Airs in that invite. You know what's coming. Now, German also detailed the next generation MacBook Air, which could come out by the end of this year with this newest M1X chip or whatever they call it. It'll bring higher end graphics that could include a nine or eight core graphics processing unit. Now, recent leaks also claim it will have an even thinner body than before, but also follow a similar design language of that flat body with flat edges and rounded corners and not the tapered design of the current MacBook Air. So the Air, that would be for later and not WWDC, but there's just so much in play right now. I mean, look, we also have Mac Mini leaks, Mac Pro leaks to cover. I'll do that in another video. But let's get back to the WWDC 21 keynote invitation that is just screaming 
new laptops at us. Or maybe they just put them in there so they could create the reflection of developer tools, messages, and the calendar and terminal apps in those Memoji's eyes. And software is cool. And look, it's the heart of WWDC. But I know that one of you is screaming, Brian, Apple Glass, new hardware at WWDC. Look, the Memojis are wearing Apple Glass. Uh, no, they aren't. They're just wearing glasses. I'm sorry. And sure, Apple could give us a first sneak peek at it. And we all want to see what they're cooking. I may be totally wrong here, but... If this event is going to focus on the new power of the next iteration of Apple Silicon, plus an update to all of the new OSs, and then feature new MacBook Pro, I don't think we see Apple Glass talk here at all. It's still not baked enough, and maybe we see something later this year, but I'm saying no Apple Glass at WWDC 21 as of this specific moment with the ability to change my mind at any time. And if I'm a wrong tongue, hey, look, you can throw all the bad apples at me that you want in, uh, what, a couple of weeks. Okay, what other things do we see in here? What is that weird thing in that guy's left ear? Oh, it's an AirPod, and I'm surprised it stays in because my left one pops out all the time. Yeah, you too, right? I know this, but could we see AirPods 3 at this event? I feel like it would be kind of out of place, so I'm gonna say no right now, but maybe we potentially hear Apple talk more about their recent announcement that spatial audio with support for Dolby Atmos is coming to Apple Music, and so is lossless audio. Even if many of their current audio products don't support lossless audio at all, which was probably the most confusing part of it. Now, Apple recently released a support document to clear up some of the confusion after their initial announcement. In it, they say the HomePod and HomePod Mini will both gain support for Apple Music lossless audio in a future software update. Even if the HomePod is discontinued, what makes you wonder if there's a new one coming down the road, but HomePod and HomePod Mini will not support it on launch when the feature arrives sometime in June. Now the AirPods and AirPods Pro will not be able to support it because Bluetooth doesn't support the higher quality audio format. AirPods Max won't support it wirelessly, but if you use a wired connection with the AirPods Max, you know that it does support uh, that lightning to 3.5 millimeter cable. Apple says the playback won't be completely lossless due to the analog to digital conversion in the cable. So technically you won't get the full lossless audio track and they're saying kinda? And yeah, I guess to me that's a no, but there's still really plenty of debate of how much benefit you're gonna really get from lossless audio, unless you're an audiophile that has an expensive audio setup. And those are the type of people that really care about this and they already invest in this. You know, the general consumer just isn't gonna be able to make a distinction with lossless audio for the most part with what they have. So I had to throw all that in here just to clear things up for you all at home, what's going on with Apple lossless audio and you know, too bad they got rid of that headphone jack that would have fully supported lossless audio. Huh. But I'm absolutely excited about the new spatial audio support because we've seen that really this new push for content like 360 reality audio from Sony, even if their library is limited. And we don't even know how expansive Apple Music spatial audio with support for Dolby Atmos library is until it launches. But if you compare it to other services like Tidal or Amazon Music HD, they don't even have over 200 tracks themselves supporting these more immersive music formats that require them to work with artists that are committed to it. And I know that took a lot of explaining, but I wanted to get all that info out there. Okay, anyways, back to my point. No, <laughs> I don't think we'll see AirPods at Dub Dub 21. Ugh, and I even just grossed myself out calling it Dub Dub. You know, I bet there will likely be a drinking game during my live stream of the keynote that you can find right back here on this channel, you know when it goes down. Okay, all right, we're still on the invite. I don't know if you saw any more clues that I might have missed, like that Memoji in the center has blue hair, so that has got to mean that we're getting a blue MacBook Pro. Finally, a blue MacBook Pro. No, it doesn't, that's totally made up, just like all these things. But look, what other wild theories can you all pull from this invite? I'd love you to go deep and get crazy with me, and you can be regular, but I'm here for it all, and you can put it in the comments below for me to, to giggle at. Okay, if this is WWDC, it's all about the software, and I think there is some huge potential for a lot of surprising things that could be coming in June. The fact is that we haven't heard too much. There haven't been really many major leaks yet, and we still have a couple more weeks left for that to change, of course, but right now, out of all of Apple's OSs at this moment, I'm really the most excited about iPad OS 15 for the iPad Pro. Now, if you saw my iPad Pro review, I basically left the kind of final conclusion as an incomplete and 
to be determined review until after we find out what happens at WWDC 21 because I just still can't believe Apple's going to give us even more power than ever with the M1 chip. You got 16 gigs of RAM with the one or two terabyte configuration. You got a Thunderbolt port and a new mini LED display that matches the same specs as the current Pro Display XDR without giving us new features, functionality, and software to take full advantage of it all. This just can't happen. So I'm looking directly at you, Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro Apple. And man, how crazy it is that I believe or want that to happen before multiple user logins on the iPad because I really did give up on that a long time ago. But I hope that WWDC finally unlocks the iPad and really the iPad Pro even more because it would just be silly and plain stupid that with all those improvements, we're still running the same stuff on an iPad from 2020. No. We've heard reports of a new home screen for iPad, and if that means actual customization on every page with widgets wherever I want them, look, I'm all for that too. But overall, it's been pretty quiet on the iPad software front. So I've got really high hopes for iPad OS 15. Don't let me down, Apple. Okay, next up, I'm looking for big, big things from Watch OS 8 as well. Now, we're expecting new hardware for the Apple Watch later this year. John Prosser recently leaked what's believed to be the next Apple Watch, which follows that flat design, flat edges, and has the consistent look and feel across Apple's entire product line, like the iPhone, iPad Pro, and then even the upcoming MacBook Pro lineup based on rumors. Plus, you got the long-standing rumors that will potentially get a glucose monitoring sensor in this year's Apple Watch. That might not affect you, but this is going to be a huge difference maker to the over 400 million people worldwide living with diabetes. And then you got the over 34 million in the US. That is one out of every 10 people. Now, there have been no reported changes in display sizes, but what? We're like 99.9% .9 sure that Apple won't talk about new Apple Watch hardware at WWDC. But I'm still waiting for Apple to really unlock this Apple Watch for the masses and make the setup completely independent of the iPhone. You know, there have been some new developments that give us more movement in that direction. Both Spotify and Tidal recently announced that their Apple Watch apps now have the ability to download music directly to the device for offline play. And this is the first time that we've seen this from major third-party music services since the Apple Watch first came out. So to me, this is a big deal. And as someone with the cellular Apple Watch, the more independent that this thing becomes, the better. But it also could be an indication that we could see larger storage sizes in the future as well. We know that the current Series 6 has 32 gigs of storage. And with these apps and maybe future apps likely downloading more content to the watch, 64 gigs doesn't seem like a stretch and maybe that could happen as well. Now, if you asked me about a wish list for Watch OS 7, I think two things come to mind immediately. The no brainer is having the Find My app on the Apple Watch have the ability to see your air tags. Right now, you can only see other people through the Apple Watch app and no devices, so I think this is a really easy feature to implement and this kind of piggybacks onto those ecosystem benefits. Apple also introduced sleep tracking last year at the conference and it was really more like sleep training to get you into this routine and the metrics were far behind what other apps do. I think Apple really needs to step up what it records and displays for sleep tracking to become a whole lot more useful in Watch OS 8. Of course, I think the number one request will always be better battery life and software optimizations that can help a little but the biggest change software wise that they can do right now before we know what new hardware is coming is give the apple watch even more independence to be set up on its own and then just open up the floodgates to anyone to buy one that's just the smart thing to do okay let's jump from watch os 7 to ios 15 a nice transition here because the latest rumor reports are talking about mostly tweaks instead of any major groundbreaking features. Now we could see new notification settings with a new look on screen and even more granular settings in iOS 15 that allows them to be based on, you know, what activity you're doing or maybe the time of day you could really customize those. We have this tweet by Connor Jewis who doesn't have a previous track record but got some attention and claims that Apple will also be making tweaks to the dark mode UI. We know that Apple's always looking to make messages better and do more so there could be some tweaks there as well. But the other new iOS 15 feature could be food tracking. Now, follow along here. Earlier in May, Apple sent out a survey to new Apple Watch users to learn about their habits. And in that survey, they specifically asked if the user had any apps installed to monitor eating habits, medications, and blood glucose levels. So at the very least, they've been thinking about this, but this would go hand in hand with a potential glucose monitoring sensor on the Apple Watch that has been rumored for the Series 7, which then 
ties back to the new tracking feature in the health app in iOS 15. See, it all comes together. Now, we could also see even more privacy options after Apple's recent app tracking implementation that has been a real success and a, a big peace of mind for most consumers. I also hope we finally see an update to the Find My app, which allows more than one person to track a single AirTag if they're part of the same family. This was something that we thought would have been there from the start. Tile has a similar implementation where multiple users can follow a single tag, but it's not here yet. And I'm just asking nicely for iOS 15 to bring this feature to the Find My app ASAP. So these are all the things to look out for in iOS 15 at WWDC with others that we don't even know yet. And then finally, Mac OS. It got top billing last year as a complete redesign visually that brought even more elements from iOS and then merged them with Mac OS. Big sir! The app icons, the control center, you got these button shapes and sliders. They are just begging for me to touch them with my fingers, but there's still no word about any touchscreen Mac anywhere because this was a complete cosmetic overhaul. This feels like a year of really fine tuning under the hood for optimizations. Now, the biggest thing happening though is that the iPad Pro now has an M1 chip and an M1 chip can also run a full Mac OS. But I still don't think they're gonna put Mac OS on an iPad. They've kind of shown us that they really wanna keep this device different and its own thing. If you saw my interview, I even asked the iPad Pro team directly if they've even experimented using Bootcamp on an iPad and you can guess, I didn't get a direct answer to my yes or no question, but will we potentially see more connective tissue between Mac OS and iPad OS? I feel like absolutely, now that they both have an M1 chip inside for the 2021 model. Well, I at least hope so, but I'm gonna stay cautiously optimistic here I feel like I've been doing that for a while. So maybe Mac OS surprises, but I'm really hoping iPad OS and watch OS can impress me this year at WWDC. Plus you got the potential prospect of getting new hardware that could make this another killer Apple event. So I want to know what do you expect or want to see at WWDC? I really think this has a chance to be a huge show. And if, Hey, if they throw an Apple glass, a tease on top of a MacBook pro on top of all these software updates, that's just gonna be icing on the cake. So put it in the comments. What do you wanna see? What do you expect to see? And then I will read them and you know, I'll probably just go on with my day. So set an alarm, clear your calendar, change whatever plans you had, even if you're still staying at home. WWDC 21 kicks off with the Apple keynote on Monday, June the 7th at 10 a.m. Pacific time, 1 p.m. Eastern. And you can watch it live with me right here on my YouTube channel. It's a legit party here with your live calls and you all make it so fun, especially in the chat room. Y'all get a little crazy. All right. Thanks again to our sponsor, NordVPN. NordVPN allows you to unlock your favorite apps like Netflix, YouTube, and your favorite entertainment sites from their over 5,000 servers in 59 countries. So many of us are streaming video every day, and NordVPN unlocks all that content on many streaming services, including region-exclusive content. So watch more content from Netflix, Hulu, and others while also protecting yourself from the bad stuff online. Now, if you're a gamer and a game isn't available in your country, you can change your virtual location to buy the games you want. You can game securely and avoid DDoS attacks that significantly slow down your connection and block malware-ridden websites. NordVPN supports up to six different devices. There's double data encryption for increased anonymity that shields your online activity, and it's compatible with Windows, Mac OS, Linux, iOS, and Android. There's even an extension for your Chrome browser. Now, it's been confirmed by speed tests. NordVPN is the fastest VPN out there. You can connect easily with one click or enable auto connect for zero click protection. It's been recommended as the best VPN by multiple sites and was an editor's choice earning all the green checks on PC mag. So go to nordvpn.com slash Brian Tong or use code Brian Tong to get a two year plan with a huge discount plus one additional month for free. Protect yourself online today with NordVPN. All right. That is going to do it for this video. It was a monster, but if you like what you see, give me that thumbs up, subs up, and hit that notification bell, ding, to get all my videos when they drop. And if you want more Apple goodness, check out my Apple Bits XL audio podcast to get the latest deep dive with all these stories and new ones every week with special guests. Thank you so much for watching. WWDC, I'm telling you, is gonna be a good one. I, I don't know, I just feel like, I just feel like something big is gonna happen. So we'll see you next time. Take care and be safe. Peace.